Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your November 2017 general tarot forecast. This is a general focus for um, Sagittarians. If you would like a personal reading, many of my readings are actually more on the astrological side of things. If you have your natal chart, that's very helpful. And um, sometimes I have the tarot combined with it. Um, I have pure tarot readings though, but uh, you can just um, check me out below. I'll provide a link. It's rainamoonastrology.com. Okay, I'm just shuffling the cards here. Oh, it's a weird light now. I don't know if it's because of the time of year. Because usually it doesn't create that kind of a glare. But we'll work with that. And I'll just go like this. I can see all of the cards. Okay, this uh, time period for Sagittarius is a lot of contemplative stuff going on the month before the solar return. I know some of you actually have your birthdays in, in late November, so happy birthday to those of you who do. But most, including myself, have it in December. And even for those of you who are early Sagittarians, you do have this energy of 12th house stuff happening for most of the month too with the sun there and there's uh, there there are other things that are in the 12th house for like Venus goes there and things like that so and Jupiter's there see that's a big one Jupiter's our ruler so having Jupiter in the 12th house expands that area for us in the next year and that can be very helpful if you have been feeling a sense of disconnection, uh, disconnect <laughs> uh, with the spiritual realm. And even a Sagittarian that typically were associated with being philosophical at the very least, if not downright totally into a spiritual path, usually we are that way, but sometimes life events come up and give us a sense of like, okay, what's it all about? And Saturn being in the first house can be one of those things where it may hold this mirror up and say, okay, what is going on, Sagittarius? This is yourself. You know, Saturn is in the sign of Sagittarius. What are you doing with your life? And, and this life where you are a sun in Sagittarius is fleeting. And so how are you, what kind of choices are you making and what are you doing to get to your heart's desire? And speaking of heart's desire, all month long, Mars is in that sector, the 11th house, and that makes us driven to have our dreams come true. Just absolutely driven. And so it would behoove you to really spend the month of November in contemplation thinking about what you want and why you want it and seeing if there's a connection between anyone else other than you. But if you know that you want something because it expresses who you are at your core level, then that's a wonderful thing. So the... The focus or the theme of November is the Four of Cups. Now, this is one of those cards that I always have such a problem with because to me, it seems overtly negative. It seems like it's based on dissatisfaction in life. And I've actually read descriptions that are not 100% that way, that it can be about experiencing relationship that is very structured, that is not chaotic, 
So, or wanting that in your life. So that's a possibility. I'm going to grab this book that I that I really you see how dog-eared it is. It's called um, Tarot Plain and Sim Simple by Anthony Lewis. I'm just going to see what keywords he gives because yeah he he gives the the theme uh, discontent and he says boredom weariness withdrawal social isolation lack of motivation feeling fed up the honeymoon is over i never promised you a rose garden feeling jaded ennui introversion lost in thought reassessment reevaluation well i would say that the reassessment is a big one because you may have something that you've been wanting to do and now certain things have come up that make you question whether you're going to still do it. And this could involve in a, a relationship too. This could involve um, or, or a past relationship. We have in the past position the king of swords. If this is a person in your life this can be a mature air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, who you have been with, maybe this man you've had children with, and uh, so the father of your children, but this can also be a judge, somebody in a position of authority that has to make like big time decisions, or even your boss. Um, it could be your boss, especially if your boss is very... Uh, intellectual and not like an emotional type of person but there's a sense of dissatisfaction that is connected to that person uh, one example that I would give you is you were with somebody and you thought it was going to be this great thing and it turned out that it wasn't that great uh, even a marriage uh, if that is a divorce decree you may realize now that it's not, it still hasn't fixed whatever was unhappy within you. That is such a big thing, is understanding that changing outer circumstances really doesn't touch the inside a lot of times. And some people, they're always taking actions, but they're not looking at themselves. So definitely look at yourself. Forget about what everybody else wants. Look at yourself and what it is that you really want and see if any dissatisfaction is due to your own expectations and your maybe muddled thinking. Um, one thing that I would say about that Four of Cups is it could be reevaluation. So you might be thinking about some things in your life that need to be altered. What we have now is the Four of Wands, a very positive card for home and family issues, even a new home. So it, it could be that that driving force of dissatisfaction and reevaluation has brought you to this point where you are able to, to um, see yourself in a happier future. It's very interesting. I just noticed that the Justice card was um, below that Four of Cups. So definitely with the King of Swords, that could definitely be a situation where a legal judgment has been rendered. And it would be something that was in your favor. With the Four of Wands, this could be an actual person. Uh, a fellow Sagittarian, a Leo, or an Aries person who you have gotten involved with and they are much more uh, compatible with you. And it's interesting because with the Four of Cups, it may have been a situation where a former partner, and this might have been actually the air sign, one of the air signs that I mentioned, they may have been somebody that did not give you emotional satisfaction, okay? And that's what led to your dissatisfaction because with the Four of Wands, you notice that there's two fours here, Four of Cups and the Four of Wands. The number four represents stability and a firm foundation. So 
you may have uh, met somebody possibly with fire in their charts that is matching you as a fire sign. So there's that sense of passion in life and that is something that you need very much so. Um, the King of Swords is a real cool customer. It doesn't mean that this person's a bad person. It just means that you may have been incompatible with this person because of uh, differing temperaments. In, in job situations, there may have been just um, a sense of dissatisfaction on the job, and you may even be working from home now. That's always a possibility. But the Justice card is, a spirit, is in the spiritual position, so it's indicating how things go into this equilibrium phase when we are choosing things that are right for us and we're honoring our, ourselves. Things tend to work out where we get good coming back to us. Um, and um, let me see here. What crosses you is represented by the Eight of Swords. <clears throat> and the Eight of Swords is a card that is talking about self-limiting beliefs. And that's kind of what I, I was hinting at at the beginning when I said about the Four of Cups is that a lot of times people try to change the outer in order when they need to change the inner world. Um, it's possible that you were in a relationship or in a job situation where you were not treated as you should have been or honored as you should have been or there wasn't that sense of a good work environment. There may have been a lot of apathy and that was... Um, something that bothered you because, of course, fire signs want to feel enthused about life. Anytime that fire signs are surrounded by negative people or a negative environment, it can really affect us because we want to gravitate towards positive situations. But what can happen is, you know, in our individual makeup, depending on, you know, what you have dealt with in your past, in your childhood, in your past lives, you may have certain beliefs that need to, to change. And they still are, have taken hold of you. And it's possible, I know this myself, it's possible to take steps in positive directions and to have positive things happen, but still have areas to work on. Swords are connected to thoughts and also to communication. So how is that? Are you somebody who is um, basically uh, in a positive mindset with everything you do? Or do you have a tendency to complain or to criticize and things like that? Also, that Eight of Swords is could be talking about that relationship with that Swords person that somehow you two are still connected. Maybe that person's a narcissist. Even though the King of Swords is in the upright position, uh, sometimes I see narcissists as being hugely successful. So their lives seem like they are really happening and successful and everything's going great for them. And the rest of us are left scratching our heads and saying, how come this person doesn't have to face what they what they're uh, doing in life and it's because I believe it's because if you believe in yourself you could be the biggest jerk in the world but you may tend to attract good things to you if you're somebody who feels like a victim and you feel like you can't move and that you're trapped then that may attract more of the same you may be a sweet person but you still have some things to work on. The advice, this can also be what's coming up in the near future is represented by the Hierophant. Again, um, getting in touch with the spiritual dimension, not just the worldly 
part of life. Maybe you got sucked into things. I'm, I'm thinking about me as well. And you, it's very easy and it's seductive. And you can think, oh, I'm doing it. It's, it's good for me. It's my career. Um, there's no reason why I shouldn't be so involved with this. But you can lose yourself when you are too, when you're putting too much emphasis on one part of your life. And that can automatically lead if something, you know, doesn't flow right for a certain period of time, people start to panic and they're like, what's happening? And that's because they've put all their eggs into one basket and they don't have like the sense of equanimity. No matter what happens, I remain, um, my feathers remain unruffled. I'm not... I'm not like uh, dependent on external circumstances for my higher good. This could be a Taurus person that comes into your life um, for some reason. And um, the outcome is the chariot card. And this indicates victory. So we have a lot of cards that may be construed as a little bit challenging. Even the justice card in the upright position could indicate for some people divorce or divorce proceedings or legal um, proceedings. And um, yet you emerge victorious. And you may feel like this sense of not being able to move forward and that you're trapped in something, but eventually you work it out. The cherry card is interesting. I associate it with meditation because on the card you can see that the person, and they talk about this in the Bhagavad Gita, about, and I think they use the chariot and the driver as the as symbolic of you know your you and your mind. So taken at the higher level, we can say that this becomes this, where you harness your thoughts in a way that you gain mastery over them and that allows you to be victorious in so many levels of areas of life and um, this is during the month where you're doing a lot you know you could call it shadow work I guess because it's 12th house stuff and you emerge victorious because you're not afraid of what lurks beneath deeply, you know. <laughs> um, you're dealing with those things and they're not affecting you at a very subtle level anymore. So anyway, Sagittarius, I hope you enjoyed this and um, have a wonderful month. Bye.